In this short video, we'll describe what you need to know about equilibrium constants for the MCAT. Equilibrium occurs when the concentration of products and reactants are no longer changing. We can quantify this with an equilibrium constant, which tells us the ratio of products over reactants at equilibrium. It doesn't matter what type of equilibrium we're describing, it's always going to be equal to products over reactants. There are two major caveats, however. We're not going to include solids in our equilibrium constant, and we'll also ignore pure liquids. When we discuss pure liquids, we're mostly talking about water, but any sort of solvent or other pure liquid will also be excluded. While we might be used to thinking about equilibrium constants in the context of general chemistry, they also show up in biochemistry too. However, regardless of the topic, they are always going to be equal to the concentration of products over reactants. Let's use KD as our first example of this and how understanding equilibrium constants can help us more generally. Then we will apply these general concepts to examples in solubility and acids and bases. Since all K values are equal to the concentration of products over reactants, the value of KD will be equal to the concentration of the enzyme times the concentration of the substrate, since those are represented as our products right over here. This will now be all over the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex, or reactants listed over here on the left. Notice that any time we have either multiple products or mutable reactants, the concentration of both of these things show up and will be multiplied by one another. As a whole, the higher the KD value, the more dissociated the enzyme and the substrate are, or the lower the affinity they have for one another. Hopefully this makes sense because as the KD value increases, the numerator of this fraction must also be increasing, or the concentration of the enzyme times the concentration of the substrate must also be increasing, meaning there's more dissociated enzyme and substrate. Here we can see the importance of paying attention to the equilibrium constant subscript. In this particular case, the D in KD is referring to the dissociation constant. So as this KD value increases, so is the dissociation. We'll see this in further examples. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and look at the Ka value or the equilibrium constant of association. Again, it's still equal to the products over the reactants, except this time it's flipped. So the products in this case are gonna be the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex over the concentration of the enzyme times the concentration of the substrate. Here, since it's describing association, as we have an increase in the Ka value, we should expect to see an increase in association. This is represented by the concentration in the enzyme substrate complex, since that's describing two things that have associated with one another. This means that we should also expect to see a higher concentration of enzyme substrate complex in comparison to the enzyme and substrate alone. Now let's turn towards an example in general chemistry. Here we're going to be looking at a KSP or a solubility value. Again, all of our K values are always the same. They'll still be equal to the concentration of products over the concentration of reactants. But remember, there's one key factor. We're not going to include pure solids, which means that NaCl won't be included in our equilibrium constant. That means we're simply going to take the concentration of Na plus ions and multiply them by the concentration of Cl minus ions. Again, if the KSP value is increasing, that would tell us that this NaCl has a really high solubility. However, if the KSP for NaCl was lower, it would tell us that it has a lower solubility. In this way, we can use this to compare multiple different KSP values really easily. Now that we've seen examples with enzymes and solubility, let's look at an example with the equilibrium constant of acid dissociation, Ka for acid bases. Again, we repeat the exact same process. It's still going to be equal to the concentration of products over reactants. And again, we will exclude pure liquids. Now, remember before I said that this is mostly going to be water, so we won't include water in our equilibrium constant. Here we have the concentration of Cl- as one of our products times the concentration of H3O+, all over the concentration of HCl, since that is our one reactant, since we're not including water. Again, here we begin, begin to think about what does a high Ka value mean? A high Ka value can be seen in two different ways. It can be seen as describing acid dissociation. And the more an acid dissociates or the more readily an acid dissociates, the stronger that acid is. So it makes complete sense that higher Ka values would describe stronger acids. However, we could also think of this in terms of the H3O plus concentration, which is also another way of saying the H plus concentration. And we know that the higher the H plus concentration, then the higher the acidity of that particular compound or that solution is. Well, if the Ka value is increasing, that means our numerator or our H3O plus concentration must also be increasing. So again, it makes complete sense that higher Ka values would end up describing more acidic compounds since they'll lead to higher concentrations of H plus. 
Up to this point, none of the examples we've looked at have had stoichiometric coefficients. Let's go ahead and discuss what we should do if our balanced reaction has stoichiometric coefficients in it. Ultimately, all you're going to do is take that coefficient, whatever number it happens to be, and turn it into an exponent for whatever concentration it's associated with. Let's go ahead and look at an example to see how this works. Here we'll look at another example of KSP. And again, remember for KSP or any equilibrium constant, we're not going to include pure solids or pure liquids. So we won't include the MgCl2 since that is a solid. Again, KSP values are equal to the products over the reactants. We don't actually have any reactants to include. And so in this case, we'll simply have the concentration of Mg2 plus times the concentration of Cl minus. However, here we have two as a stoichiometric coefficient to have this balanced reaction. In this case, we just simply take that number and we're going to put it as an exponent for its particular concentration. So the correct KSP value for the, the solubility of MgCl2 is the concentration of Mg2 plus times the concentration of Cl minus squared. And again, regardless of the k value, if you have a stoichiometric coefficient, it'll always become an exponent. It doesn't matter if it's a KSP or a KEQ or a KF or whatever kind of k value. If you have that stoichiometric coefficient, make sure it ends up as an exponent attached to the concentration to which it pertains. Now that we've seen a couple examples of equilibrium constants, let's go ahead and dive into their utility and learn more about how to use them. Let's start off with an example involving KD. This question here asks, which of the following enzymes has the highest affinity for its substrate molecule? Our answer choices comprise of KD values as well as enzymes. Let's go ahead and think about two separate examples here. If we have a high KD value and if we have a low KD value. Remember, KD, the D in there, describes dissociation. So this is describing a dissociation constant. And the higher the KD value, the higher the dissociation. From here, we need to think about how dissociation and affinity relate to one another. And if we have a high dissociation, presumably we have a low affinity. We have a low affinity in this particular case because these things aren't really staying together, i.e. they are dissociated. We're going to see the exact opposite for a low KD value. If we have a low KD, that means we have low dissociation, and therefore we must also have high affinity. Since this particular question was asking us about something with the highest affinity, we need to look for something that has the lowest KD value. In this particular lineup, that is the KD value of 0.5, and therefore A is the correct answer. There's actually a strategy way to make some eliminations prior to doing this, and I want to point it out because a lot of these questions that ask about highest, lowest, most, least can usually be distilled down to a 50-50 really easily. This is because the question is essentially asking us about something that's extreme, highest. That means that we can go ahead and eliminate any intermediate values. In this lineup, that means that we can get rid of 0.7 and 1.2, since they're in between 0.5 and 2.8 are two extreme answers. Although this gets us to a 50-50, we still need to understand KD and equilibrium constants to get this question right. Now that we've seen an example in the context of KD, let's go down and look at an example in the context of acids and bases. This question here asks which of the following is the weakest base, and it gives us some different bases and their KB values. Let's begin by thinking about whether or not we want the highest or the lowest KB value. Remember, we can get rid of any intermediate of values because it's asking about weakest. It's asking about an extreme answer. Let's go ahead and make those eliminations before we begin thinking about the KB piece next. Let's go ahead and start with ammonia, which has a KB of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And now let's go ahead and skip down to carbonate, which has a KB equal to 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4. I begin by comparing these two because they're close in exponent value. But ultimately, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate answer choice A, ammonia, because it's a little bit smaller than carbonate. And since carbonate has the largest KB value of all of these, that's going to be one of our extreme values. Now let's go ahead and compare aniline with a KB equal to 3.9 times 10 to the negative 10. And answer choice D, pyridine with a KB equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 9. In this case here, pyridine is a little bit bigger than aniline, making that an intermediate value rather than an extreme one, since aniline will be the smallest of the two. From these here, we need to decide, are we looking for the smallest or the biggest KB value? Well, we're looking for the weakest base. And here's what we need to know. If you have a weak base, you're going to have a low amount of base dissociation. Since a KB value describes base dissociation, we want to look for the smallest KB value overall. This means that answer choice B is going to be correct since it has the smallest of all of the KB values. And answer choice C is incorrect since that would describe the strongest base of this particular set. Before we go, let's recap the three key pieces of information about equilibrium constants. First, we have to remember that all the k values, regardless of what they are, are always equal to the concentration over the concentration of products. 
And when we write these, we're always going to exclude solids and pure liquids. When we describe pure liquids, we're mostly talking about water, but that could include any other type of solvent. Lastly, if we have coefficients to make our reaction balanced, those coefficients needs to become exponents that are attached to the particular concentration to which they describe. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more helpful MCAT tips and share it with anybody else who might be taking the test.